Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Lionel and I'm your host for LT Productions and you are watching I Watch You Watch. Uh, we are covering Bel Air. This is season three, episode nine. It's currently streaming on the Peacock streaming app. Y'all gotta go watch it. I got my feelings this episode. My God. But I appreciate everyone for coming to my channel. Thank you for your support. Would you please like this video and your support for me? And also, subscribe to my channel if you are new or if you've been hiding in the bushes. Um, and you can go on and leave your comments in, below as far as your thoughts concerning the show. Now let's get into this episode. Lord, Lord, Lord. I was in my feelings because these writers are doing an amazing job and the actors are doing an amazing job. I love the passion. I love the healing. I love the brokenness. I love the struggle and not in the usual struggle sense. Um, I'm loving the community. I'm loving the strength. I'm loving the support. I'm loving the family and community amongst melanin people. Um, you guys are just showing kind of what people and community and family should be. You can fight and bicker. Don't sweep stuff under the, the, the ground. Know what to stand up for. Know, how can I say this? Know how to check someone and still love them. Accountability, that's where it is. Know how to be hard on someone and know how to let up on someone. Y'all sh showing all of that. You're showing people's strengths. You're showing people's weaknesses. Uh, you're not showing this in such a dramatic way. Or I love how the writers, you always just bring this full circle resolution, healing to certain things uh, and certain issues that ones are going through. I love it. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm emotional because we don't get to see a lot of this representation and a lot of this great writing. It's so rich and it's so timely. Let's stop writing things in such a, a one-way, stereotypical way. Um, mundane, uh, we only can be viewed one way. And, and, I love it, but whatever. Let me get into this episode. I'm not gonna be too long. Um, episode 10, that'll come out possibly tomorrow. Um, Power Ghost uh, does start, does resume tonight. So Power Ghost is gonna be my first priority and I'll try to get out um, episode 10 as soon as possible. All right, so we start off the episode with really everyone in a somber mood and really worried about Amira at this point. <sighs> Carlton is waiting outside Amira's home. We didn't know whose home he was actually at, but later on we find Uncle Phil and also Aunt Viv, they're waiting in the car for him. Um, after a while of waiting, he ends up getting in the car and saying, hey, uh, let's just go. Her parents won't let me see her now. Um, Amira's gonna be okay, just to let you know that. Lisa, she's at the country club, and right now the pool is closed, and there's a sign saying that pool closed for maintenance. You know, after she did what she did, I'm sure they gotta empty the whole pool, they clean up and do whatever. But there is um, anxiety and fear that's coming out of her that we do discover later as to how she's feeling about this whole thing. You know, her friend did die, you know. Uh, Will, he's feeling, I don't want to say guilt, but he's feeling a way that uh, about Amira almost attempt at ending her life. Um, Carlton comes home and he tries to talk to Carlton and Carlton's not hearing it. Um, Will was like trying to comfort him and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry about Amira. Just to let you know, it's not your fault. And Carlton said, what? <laughs> I know it's not my fault. It's yours. Wait, what are you talking about? It's always you. <laughs> like Carlton really laid into him and just saying that, you know, if it wasn't for you, none of this stuff would be going on. And Carlton, and Will's trying to figure out what, you, what are you talking about? Even with you, it's your fault that my with the stuff that you did towards my dad as far as the arson part for the Campbell's uh, um, Omar and all that. It's your fault. He really laid into him and ended up saying you ended up effing up your, your basketball career um, and all this stuff. And basically, you are just like your dad. Now, look, 
Will was ready to square up. He put his hands on Carlton, but he didn't go there. Uncle Phil and also uh, Viv, they ran out, stopped the whole situation. I said, God, God, God. I think that they're going to try to use that um, Will being like Lou and just running to the ground. Some people will and weaponize that. You know, Will got angry, but I think that there was still some type of peace inside of him. You know, he did react, and I think it was kind of like this knee-jerk reaction that he did have. I think he's moving past some of the pain and the hurt that he has felt towards Lou. That's just my personal opinion, but you guys can think or, or chime in and let me know what you think. Um, so the parents, they get down and they start talking um, to Will Carlton. Carlton ends up saying, well, have you actually, uh, has Will actually told you what he did? <laughs> so Will had to go on and confess about uh, the stuff that happened happened to Omar's um, construction site. And I've seen this anger come out of Aunt Viv that we have not seen thus far. At this point, Uncle Phil is not speaking to him. I think he's holding off before he blows off some, blow off some unnecessary steam on him uh, or rage or whatever you want to call it. So Aunt Viv talks to him and just basically lays into him. Like, why would you come here <laughs> over here and you're still doing the same things you just got out of this whole situation da 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 uh, your mom already thinks that I'm too soft on you and maybe there are some consequences that you need to really pay for what you have done <laughs> and all of this stuff you... so she ends up making him call Vi we didn't get to hear the conversation and all that good stuff I'm cool with it but it was just like I don't think I understood the magnitude of what Will had done or what was Will a part of. I don't think I did because I was like, okay, I get it, but what what really did he do so much damage to, you know? Um, but he is a teenager, too. I have to think about that. Um, Aunt Viv does inform Will that uh, Jazz is in jail. And he was like, well, Jazz is not the one that did anything. Like, oh, that's why he hasn't been calling me. So, after that, what happened? Carlton um, and Will, they just aren't seeing eye to eye. I think later on, Carlton goes, it, he goes and talks to um, Amira's mom. And he was like, you know, I just wanted to check in to make sure she's okay. Um, Amira's mom said, you know, she's good. She's at peace right now. Da, 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 da. So they talk and he says, you know, I know that you guys are really going through something, especially around this time of year. And she said, what? What are you talking about? Well, it's the anniversary of her sister's death. And she said, no. Then we go over to a scene with uh, Lisa and Carlton at the country club. They talk. And he ends up saying that Amira doesn't have a sister. Um, something that happened with her involving a car crash. And she got addicted to pain pills. Um, Lisa and Carlton are leaning on each other. Will comes up. Uh, Quentin calls in regards to some type of investment deal or text him or whatever. And Carl, and uh, Will went on and accepted this investment thing. So he goes down to uh, the country club and, and talks with um, Carlton and also Lisa. And he was just telling Carlton, you know, I really feel for Amira and all that. I hope that she's okay. Da, 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 da. And then he wants to talk about the business. And then Carlton's like, what? So what she just was talking about was so ingenuine. And basically said, F, <laughs> uh, black sis. Because he said, you know, we got the investor, but we need to do that. Da, da, da. He's like, no, it's not business as usual. So then he then it, um, lets it be known that uh, to Lisa, Carlton does, of what happened, or that Carlton was involved with this whole situation down in South LA. At this point, Carlton leaves, and Lisa was like, what's going on? <laughs> and Will started saying, he's like, no, I can't really, uh, Lisa was like, I can't really deal with any more of your you know, like, not right now, you know. So basically they're at uh, it roads at this moment because of the uckery that Will got himself in. I promise, I didn't really see the fallout or the, the magnitude of what Will's involvement in, but seeing everyone's reactions, I, I get it. On the other side of town, in Jeffrey Land, we got Frederick, who's still trying to be in these streets. Um, he's still winning different type of games that he's doing. So these guys ended up coming to beat him up. And you were thinking it was something that had to do with um, 
Oh, it's up to have a bookie or something to that nature. No. So, when Frederick comes home, we see, well, first, Jeffrey and Penelope, they are really in the zone of recapturing what they did have back in the day. And I think Penelope said, I missed this. So, anyways, Frederick comes home. He's got this ice pack or, or see the black eye, and they ask what's going on. He says, it's just nothing too much. It was just the bookie stuff. Um, they try to talk to him in regards to that, like, you don't really need to be about, about this street life or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, later on in the episode, we find out that the deal that Jeffrey was trying to do, or trying to get um, as far as rec recompense it, um, he could not do. Penelope found out that we she had a secret agenda. She was like, earlier in the day, let's just run. <laughs> and Jeffrey wasn't really feeling that at the moment, da 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 um, so, so um, later on, they're about to go to this restaurant, and you're seeing Pen Penelope all j um, jittery and nervous, and da 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 da. And he's asking her different questions, and uh, really, Jeffrey knew what was going on. There was this car that was following them, and basically said, "Are you going to tell me the truth about this car that you keep looking over your shoulder with about?" And Penelope said, "Look, this is what happened." The deal was broken. They didn't take the deal. And they told me that I got to lead you to him or lead you to them. And they just said that they want to talk. Um, they figure out that Jeffrey, who got beat up, or that Frederick, who got beat up, it was really the people from back in the day, from the organization. So at this point, Jeffrey said, you know, I need you to trust me right now. Can you? And Penelope said, yes. So they disappear and escape these guys. Um, they go home and they talk to Frederick as to what's happening. Because um, before they were trying to get him out of the street life, he, he kind of is enjoying the street life and thinking that it's a, in his blood. Penelope was like, look, this was his past and he's trying to move forward in his future. This is not him. Jeffrey, blah, 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 blah. So they give him a rundown as to what is really going on with this organization. Now that we're doing on that side of town, I just want to just say this. I love that they gave a family uh, I'll call it recipe or element to um, Jeffrey. I, I love seeing this new side to him as far as just protecting his family. I mean, it's very similar to how he is with the banks, but it gets more personal when it's your own blood, even though it's very blood related with the banks. You know, um, I think that he would sacrifice his life for either or <laughs> his, his real, for his other family and the bank's family. I love it. I love how they gave him this arc. Um, so at this point, on the other side of town, Will is upset. Um, not so upset. He's feeling, he's in his feelings about how everyone is upset at him. He goes down to the jail to bail out Jazz, and he brings along Hillary. Um, and Jazz was like, well, where'd you get this money from? Um, it's actually from Black Cess. And Black Cess, and Jazz was like, what? What are you doing? He said, no, we were going to give you a cut anyway. So that's just that. So while there, him and Hillary are kind of talking, and in walks Yolanda Porter. Yolanda Porter is kind of looking at Will a certain way because of Uncle Phil. And then they find out that Hillary is Uncle Phil's daughter, so she's kind of got a little attitude with Hillary in regards to that. Um, Yolanda said, you know, when I heard of your release, um, I wanted to come here and take you home. Now I need to know this, Yolanda, how come you didn't have no funds or anything to get him out of jail? Like, you waited until he got released? Like, I, with this whole organization that y'all trying to do, there was no funds for any of this type of stuff that you guys created for destruction? I'm just asking, you know. Um, and I don't hate Delonda or anything of that nature, but I'm just kind of being critical of certain things, especially when it comes to Jazz and Hillary. So Yolanda takes him home and all that good stuff. Hillary has been planning for her wedding, and Ivy's there to make sure that Hillary does everything in her power to be so bougie about this wedding. Um, she wants ice sculptures and da 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 da. And Hillary's like, it's not all about that. Um, the wedding coordinator said, well, this is pretty good coming from your um, maid of honor. Well, no, Ashley is the maid of honor. And she said, I haven't seen her. <laughs> when has she been able to come out of daycare to, to do this? Da 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 da. So she still leaves Ivy in charge when Hillary had to go. Hillary, after the whole thing with the jail situation, goes to talk with Jazz. 
and they basically says, you know, we got some unresolved stuff that we got to get out of our systems towards each other. She confesses that you were right. I do run. I feel like when I run, I just have this fear of failure. Um, and then Jazz also admitted, admitted that he um, is, ha, has been too prideful. I let things get in the way and I lose certain things. And that was including you in our relationship, blah, 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 blah. So they did a lot of fun things together. And then Jazz was like, so are we going to smash or what? And Hillary was like, Jazz. I mean, that would have been perfect. But look, she's trying to get married. So that would be very fake. Hopefully we get a Dwayne Wayne situation with this whole Martha's Vineyard thing. I hope so, because in the next episode, I saw the summary of what's supposed to happen, and it looks like the wedding will going be at Martha's Vineyard. We need somebody to stop it, quickly. Um, so they kind of just leave things where there are. I don't know if things are settled, of course they're not, but at least they got a lot of things out that they needed to say uh, towards each other. I think Hillary did admit that she was in love with LaMarcus and Jazz. So, but why is she choosing LaMarcus though? Does it still seem easier? I don't know. <laughs> um, Carlton's not doing okay in regards to knowing that Amira lied about this whole uh, sister thing. You know, I was the first one that she called in the morning. We would speak to each other. Like, I was leaning on her, but she really didn't lean on me, da 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 da. So, Carlton goes and talks to his old buddy, his old dealer. He's trying to get some stuff from him. And the dude was like, look, I don't want to be the one or the cause of your relapse. I think that that was one of the, the best things that he could have said. But Carlton didn't appreciate it and just told him, F him. Um, now, Will, he's gone to Lisa's dad, the DA, and he wants to make a confession. Um, he starts confessing about, you know, it wasn't me or Jazz that did that. But then he said, you know, you're covering for him. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Lisa's dad said, you know, I think you need Uncle Phil here. Don't you want him here? He's like, no, I don't think he want to see me right now. Next thing you know, Uncle Phil and Uncle Viv, they come in there. Um, Lisa's dad and Uncle Viv, they go outside and Will and Phil, they talk. Um, Will was like, look, I know what what it looks like and what it seems like and all that. And it looks like I'm just the same uh, messed up kid that, that came into your home over a year ago. And Uncle Bill's like, why, there's nothing else for me to think about. I mean, you you are still doing some of the effery. And I'm just paraphrasing before, but he said, you know, you have the advantages and I've seen you come around in so many ways and you still, you did make this mistake. It was just this well-rounded type of, of conversation of, it does feel like you're the same messed up kid. When I got you out of Philly, However, I have seen such shifts and moves inside of you. And he ends up speaking this wholeness uh, to Will that I wasn't expecting. Will started tearing up. Um, I'm looking like that because Mr. Jabari you know, worked a little bit more on the tears, but I still felt the emotions or whatever. <laughs> um, so Phil ends up hugging him. You know, there are consequences to all this. You're still a teenager, so you're probably not looking at, at jail time, but there will be consequences. Um, Aunt Viv and also the DA, they talk. Fred, that's his name. He said, hey, you know, he does thank Vivian for showing up. Felisa, he didn't really understand the magnitude. And I really want you to please keep showing up. Gail would like that. That's the first time he actually spoke of his wife on the show without somebody else bringing her up, you know? And if you have any type of references to help Lisa, I want it. And also for Angela too. So I'm glad that there was a great resolve instead of this black pride, stay out of my house, da 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 No, Lisa displayed that what goes on in the house stays in the house is not working. As a teenager, as a teenager, she had too much on her hands. Anything could happen to someone with, with that much pressure on them. So Carlton does get some drugs. He's in a car somewhere and we don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> the next scene is is with, within the, the AA group session, and it's a healing circle. Lisa's there on Viv, on Uncle Phil, um, Will, Fred, they're all there. And everyone's just talking, and they talk all these positive things about Amira. Um, did he end up showing up? Did he end up showing up? 
I think he did. Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So Lisa said, you know, I really underestimated who Amira was as far as being a great friend to me and allowing me to open up in different ways. And I'm paraphrasing all that. Carlton at this point did show up. Um, I just want to cry because the, the, the strength in Carlton um, is, is great. Um, what he tells his mother is pretty cool. And I will cry a little bit later. I'll tell about it in just a second. Will tells about his journey, you know, about with the mirror. You know, we fought a lot. And she called me out on my BS. Uh, that takes a lot of courage. They spoke a lot of positive things. Carlton didn't speak. But they, I think he ended up saying, yeah, he did speak. So Lisa and Will, they ended up in a circle together and they hugged it out. The next day, he told Aunt Viv, Aunt Viv was, I love this scene. Aunt Viv was sitting on Carlton's bed as he woke up for the day. He said, you know, I used to look over your, uh, look over you as you slept as a baby. And Carlton was like, well, that's not creepy. In a sarcastic way. And she said, no, that, there was just so much peace. And then Carlton ended up confessing that he almost slipped up. And he was going to take drugs. But your messages, because Vivian had been texting him. Been texting him um, different things and, and different bright things. You know, sometimes you don't know if you're helping a person or not. Especially when you are texting them and... You don't get a response to. All you can do is just keep trying and keep pushing. You keep showing up, even if it seems like people aren't aren't responsive, because you're really piercing something in them and you're helping them. I don't know why I'm so emotional around that, but just seeing them be there for each other and not let anyone fall. They still let Carlton make his own decision of what he wanted to do with his life at that moment, but they still kept checking in on him, telling him he loved him. That just meant a lot for me to see. I'm sorry I'm like this. I don't, I don't want to say I'm sorry I'm like this, but please excuse me. If you're offended by this, I understand, you know. But I love seeing it. I love seeing it. Um, I don't even know what the ending, ending thing was, but it was a beautiful, beautiful episode. I still got to get to episode 10. I love the show. I love this writing. The writers did their... their did the thing and i'm sorry i'm sorry i can't keep i'm not gonna apologize for crying you know it is what it is you know i just loved how uh, viv just showed up for him and the, she didn't bombard him but just kept saying i think of you and that ended up saving him from relapsing that's all i got y'all leave your comments below i'm sorry I, I can't keep apologizing for stuff thank you for coming to my channel and thank you for your support uh, I love you guys. Please subscribe to this channel and leave your comments below. Until the next one, peace.